module federation as a plugin architecture on this blue collar coder. I'm Jack Harrington, Jahur on Twitter. So Zach and I were working with the module federation dashboard and he was adding some performance stuff and I was like, hey, we should go and make it modular. So you can try out different performance techniques and all that. And to do that, we should make a plugin architecture and we should use module federation to do that. So he and I collaborated, worked through some code and I've created the MF dash plugins library that helps you do just that. So in this video, we're going to show you how to use that MF plugins library to create a CLI based plugin app and also to make it into an express server that has modular routes. It's really cool. Let's jump into the code. This is the library we're going to be using to get access to the plugins. It's called MF dash plugins. It's pretty new. You add it, then you import it, and then you call it with the directory name that you have your plugins in, and you get back a promise that returns an array of the plugins. It doesn't define what the plugins do or what their API surface is. It just gives you back that exposes point, that module called slash plugin. You can change that expose point if you want. So there are two templates. We have this host template here. We're going to go grab that, and that's going to make our host application. So we'll deget that into a directory called pluggable server. And then we're going to go grab the plugin template and deget that into a directory called plugin one. Now let's bring up VS code and we're just going to run this straight out of the box. We'll just go in to pluggable server on one side and plugin one on the other. So on the pluggable server side, we're first going to import the load plugins from MF plugins. Then we're going to say hello. That just, you know, says that we're in this app. We're going to call this async function called start, which starts off by awaiting the load of the plugins. And that's going to give us an array. And then for each one of those plugins, we're just going to iterate over those and call the sample function. So let's go take a look at what that's going to do. Well, that's on this guy, it's going to go into a console log for wowzers. So let's go and build the pluggable server. And we can see that it's got a disk directory, that's main. So this is actually building a webpack version of some node code, right? So it's got webpack, and webpack is then surrounding that node code. And to run that, we have a start function that runs dist main, so we'll do that. And this is basically telling us now that, hey, you don't have a directory. You know? We don't dot dot slash plugins. So to get that, we're going to build plugin one, and that in turn is going to create that dot dot slash plugins directory with plugin one as the only subdirectory in there. And it's going to have a main and a remote entry and, a, and whatever bundle of source you've got. So we'll now we'll start again. And it says hello, which was at the start of the script. And then it loads that plugin, invokes that plugin, and that gives us wowzers. Now we can go and change out wowzers to be whatever we want. Really, really wowzers. Build it again and start it again. Excellent. So before I get to the next part, I encourage you to go over and take a look at the webpack config.js files and have a look at how those are structured. They use the same module federation plugin that we've used so far. So essentially these plugins that are created are actually usable in almost any context. You can use them on the client if you want, or you can use them on the server if you want. It's, it's, it, we're, we're in a CLI app, it's, it's pretty cool. So let's go and create an Express server out of this. I'll go and get the hello world example out of Express and I'll pop it into our pluggable server and change the import here. Just want for consistency. And I'm going to take that listen part and I'm going to put it in after the start. So once we've gone through all the plugins and we've registered those, then we're going to start listening. So that's the basic flow here. We're going to import the load plugins, import Express, we're going to create an Express server. We're going to set up our default route, which in this case is just slash. And then we're going to load those plugins, we're going to do something with them, and then we're going to listen. First thing I want to do is change out the slash so that it says, you know, base pluggable server page. So we know that that's, that's coming off the server that's 
baked in without any plugins, you're going to get that. And then for each one of these plugins, I'm going to have it do two things. I'm going to have it have a path and a handler. And that's our API surface that we're expecting from each plugin. It's going to give us a string, which is path, and a handler, which is the res rec thing that we've done in any Express app. Now let's go and build that. So I'm going to go change that out to have a path called plugin one and a handler. And that handler is just going to send back hello from plugin one. So let's build plugin one. And then add express to the pluggable server. I haven't done that yet. Now we'll build it and start it. And now you can see that slash gives us base pluggable server page. And slash plugin one gives us hello from plugin one. Wow, that's cool. I can even make the font a little bigger so you can see it. And excellent. So it's not really a plugin system if you just have one, right? So let's go copy plugin one to plugin two and make the required changes. So the first thing to do would be to go over into the Webpack config, change out the module federation plugin and the path. To both say plugin two, and then change the index to be slash plugin two. You can set this to be, you, you can do whatever you want here. You can make whatever API you want, but this is just going to give us some consistency. Now I'll say hello from plugin two, and again, build that. Now we've got plugins directory now has two subdirectories, plugin one and plugin two. And we'll start it again. Now we haven't changed any server code at all. We're just literally just restarting it. And now we can go over here to plugin two. And we see plugin two and plugin one still works and the base page still works. So this pluggable server is done, right? It's generic. It can take anything. It can, you can just keep on adding plugins to your heart's content. And so now that we've got that, let's have some fun. Let's go Dockerize this thing. So we actually have a deployable Docker instance where you just point it at a plugins directory and it just serves whatever's in there. Create a Docker file. Say they were going to use node 12. That the working directory is user source app. And then we're going to go dot dot that, which is going to give us user source and make a directory called user source plugins. So that's dot dot slash plugins. Then we'll copy and package JSON, npm install it, copy the rest of the source code, build it. Expose 3000. That's the port number that we're going to be listening to on Express. And then our default command is going to be node dist main.js. It's basically just yarn start. So now let's Docker build that. And I'm going to give it a tag of pluggable server and the directory of dot. And I'm going to run Docker build. I have done this before, so that's why it's a little bit faster. And now I want to run it. I want to run it on port 3000. And there you go. So the base page works. That's great. Slash works. But plugin one and plugin two do not because the directory for the plugins within the Docker instance is empty. So we need to fix that. So I'm going to bring up the Docker dashboard here and stop that Docker container. And then I'm going to create a little run file, run.sh, because this gets a little wordy here. And the next thing we need to do is mount, add a mount parameter, where we say the source is the current working directory with dot dot slash plugins on it. And then the target is, well, what did we say in the Docker file? We said user source plugins. Great. All right, now it's schmod. Is that what it, we say? Schmod it? Change, change its permissions so that it's now executable on run.sh. And now we're going to run it. And now again, the base page works. Great. And do the plugins. Yep. Our plugins are working. That's awesome. And now let's see. Do, can we change that? So let's go and change this from hello from plugin two to this is really cool. Now we'll rebuild it. And then we'll go over 
back over to our Docker and we'll just restart the Docker image. And go back in here and now it's reloaded that set of plugins. All right, well, I hope that inspires you. I think I really wanna see what you folks make out of this one. It's, this is really cool, and it's using module federation in a way that I don't think anyone ever really thought about, so it's very exciting. All right, well, I've got a new mailing list. You can check that out in the description down below. You'll get that every week, and if you subscribe, you'll get this video a day in advance. And of course, if you have any questions, be sure to put those in the comment section down below. Always, you're free to like and share the video. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.